Today I've got a snake with me that a lot of you know. Her name is Shadow, and she has the record for the most snake escapes out of all my animals. So today I thought I would use her to talk about snake escapes. The reason I thought this would make a good video is because snakes getting out of their enclosures and getting loose in the house or in the environment is probably the biggest reason that people, especially parents or landlords or whoever, are not very comfortable having snakes in their home. So whether it's their kids or their client or whoever is not allowed to have them because they're scared it's going to end up loose wherever. This is much less common than you might actually think, although it is possible, just like how many things are possible in keeping animals. But I think the reason this is thought to be probably the most concerning thing with keeping snakes is because any time a reptile makes the news, like half the time it's because the animal escaped, and the other half is because the animal killed someone. <laughs> There's, I mean, is there ever any positive news about reptiles? Email me some positive news articles about reptiles so that I feel better about us. But they make good headlines because it's very convincing to click on. Um, whether, especially if you like have a fear of snakes or something, you're almost more inclined to fuel your own fear by finding negative things about it. And so that means that this news very quickly spreads all over the place and it gets very popular. So that means when your kid comes up and is like, hey, I, I think I want a snake, what's the first thing you're gonna think of? Of course, just anything that you know about snakes, what's that gonna be? Probably the news articles that you saw scrolling through Facebook about some 18 foot snake that escaped. Even on YouTube and other platforms in the reptile community, people love to really milk the fact that snakes escape. You know who I'm talking about, I'm, I'm talking about Brian. When does he not do it? It's like his most popular videos are all about snakes escaping. That probably doesn't really help right off the bat. As a first impression, when you're coming into the reptile community, that's probably not very fun to see. And it was like a year ago, maybe a little longer, uh, one of the times Shadow escaped, I did a video on it because she ended up getting gravid because she found a male rat snake under her house. If you don't know what I'm talking about, you can go watch that video. But originally I had the term escape in the title and I realized that's pr pretty bad to have because I'm just helping fuel that really annoying stereotype, I guess. So I removed that from the title a while ago uh, so that it hopefully doesn't have such a negative impact. Obviously, snakes do escape sometimes. How do they do it and how do you avoid it? And is it really a problem that you actually have to worry about when keeping reptiles? So you should definitely worry about it because you want to be able to avoid it. And most of the time it can very easily be avoided, but there are some reasons that they most frequently do get out. So I've had a handful of my escapes myself. I've never had a permanent snake escape, every snake that's gotten out of their enclosure. The far majority were found within like 30 seconds. If not, they were found within like a day or so. Very, not very far from where they originally were supposed to be. And I don't keep anything venomous, so like just sticking your hand around the house, trying to find a snake is not as big of a deal as if I were keeping like cobras or something. <laughs> Speaking of which, that's also something you'll see on the news a lot. Like I specifically remember it was like a woman whose cobra got out, so she just like stuck her hand under the dresser and whoop, she got bit because she wasn't thinking it through. Let's go ahead and move on to how snakes actually escape their enclosures. So it is true that they love exploring, they love finding little places, and they love migrating to find even more places. Um, this means that they will take advantage of any hole that's in their enclosure. So Shadow is a pretty thin snake. She's a colubrid. Uh, they're like, unlike pythons or boas, they are usually pretty slim and they can squeeze through very small things, smaller than you would really expect. You also have to keep in mind that there's a lot of muscle in this animal, so they can push lids off somewhat easily. There are very easy ways to keep this from happening, which I'll get to in just a minute. But first, let's talk about what they can actually fit through. So you see this, you probably think like, yeah, she's like, say an inch in diameter, so anything bigger than an inch, she can't fit through. Well, her head, for Shadow specifically, is probably a bit smaller than an inch, and she will happily try and fit it through whatever. Once that fits through, well, she doesn't want to go through my fingers, but once she's there, she can really just squeeze her very flexible muscles and her bones are somewhat flexible. Like, although they can't like tie themselves in a knot, they can bend a little bit. So as 
she squishes, I don't wanna squish her. But even applying just barely any pressure, you can already see there's a lot of squishy movement there. So if she wants to get through something and she forces her way through, she can really flatten down quite well, which means she can fit through things that are deceivingly small that you don't think she'd be able to fit through. So that means when you're setting up an enclosure, make sure that it, basically anything that's not a screen, if there's like holes as for ventilation or whatever, really double check and make sure they genuinely cannot fit through this. Another common example as to how snakes actually get out is when something is broken in the enclosure and you don't realize it. Uh, one time there was a screen, it was like a used enclosure someone gave us, and it turns out the screen that was hooked on the top of the enclosure had like a flap on the side because the glue gave out or something and so the snake could just push up on the screen and there was an opening like that wide that they could just slide right out of. So it's definitely good if you get anything used, especially enclosures, to really thoroughly check that and make sure that it is perfectly snake proof. Once you make sure there are no holes or slots or whatever, you have to make sure that everything is secure and cannot be pushed. Slightly more expensive enclosures often come with latching lids where they just slide into place and you hear them lock once they're all the way pushed. You can even put a lock on many of them with a key or whatever or a padlock if you wanted to to get like super careful so no one steals your snake. And snakes cannot... One of the nice things about using locks is it reminds you that you've always put the top on because one of the most common ways is you simply forget to put the lid back on the enclosure. If you only have one or a couple enclosures, this is very rarely going to happen, hopefully never, probably never. Um, but in my case, I have had those times where I have like 30 enclosures in the room. I'm like doing stuff at 3 a.m. because I put it off and I need to clean and stuff. If I'm like really tired, I'll just rush through it. I wanna get it done and whoops, I either didn't slide a lid all the way or I didn't put a lid back on or I did not put clips back onto a lid. Uh, these reptile clips go onto lids that simply lay on top of an enclosure and don't latch. For example, if you're using an aquarium with just a lid that falls on top, a snake can usually push that out if they can reach the top. Now, they can't just like directly climb glass, like they can't just stick to glass or something, but they can usually find things that help support them and get to the top. This means that you wanna make sure that a lid that's lying on top either is clipped closed with some latches. I'll link some in the description. You can get them on Amazon for like $4, or you can just put heavy stuff on top, like a couple of textbooks or boxes or rocks or whatever, bricks. As long as they're heavy enough to where you can like clearly not push the lid off, then you should be good. Well, as long as you have an undamaged enclosure with a lid that either latches or clips or just is weighted down, and you don't forget to put it back on, there's, there's really no risk. That's pretty much the only way a snake is going to get out. Something I completely forgot to mention is the fact that I've left doors open multiple times, like especially this one, I don't know why, and oftentimes the, the snake doesn't even move. They're just content where they are. I've done the same with ball pythons and stuff, so just because you leave something open doesn't mean they're even gonna want to leave, because they might be perfectly fine where they are, as you can see here. You have to remember that there's thousands and thousands of snakes being kept all over the place and it's very easy to pick out those few that do escape here and there um, and make news articles into them or videos. And again the most frequent escapes are when people have very large collections where it's very easy to just like miss one thing as you're going through because mistakes are going to happen no matter what you're working on and be when you have more animals there's a higher chance that you're just going to accidentally pass by a tub and forgot forget to like push it back in or forget to slide a lid on or whatever uh, but it's very easy to get into that habit again the best way i found to remember to make sure to close everything is to use actual physical locks because that like click you'll just remember when that lock clicks on. I don't know, it's just like a very nice physical way to actually get that muscle memory of remembering to put that lid back on. And when a snake does get out, they're not gonna look for people to kill or eat. <laughs> uh, they're not gonna look to go like attack you in your sleep. All they're gonna wanna do is hide and stay safe and maybe come across some food along the way. Uh, in my snake escapes I've had, they are often in basically the same place. A warm, dark, comfortable place. Whether it's like in your laundry or under another enclosure or wrapped up in a chair or around a pillow, something like that. That's like the best place to start out when looking. If you do get a very unlucky and have an escape, remember not to panic. Just like take your time and very melodically search every inch of your home. 
So is a snake escaping a valid concern? Definitely, you should be concerned about anything that would negatively impact your animal or your experience with it, but is it something that should stop you or prohibit you from getting a certain animal? As you could tell, my answer is no. Just be careful, keep track of it. Even if you have another person in the house, feel free to just like let them double check everything, make sure it's all good each time you're done in there. But most of the time it's very easy to just get into the groove of always making sure the enclosure is closed and the animal is in there when you're not supervising. Also something I should mention is snakes can go quite a while being outside their enclosure. Some people have had a snake escape and it'll show up like an hour later, like that's usually what happens with me. But people have had a snakes escape where they just like hang out, I don't know, behind the fridge or something, and they'll be there for months. And then like half a year later, they show up, they're thinner, but they're perfectly fine. So it's very impressive, and that's why you shouldn't give up if you do have an escape. Uh, you can be patient, be careful, and be thorough with your searching. But you might have heard like 24 hours after somebody has disappeared or after your dog has disappeared, your chance of finding them has gone from like a pretty decent chance to like no chance. That's very different with snakes and reptiles. They can be gone forever and then just randomly show up someday perfectly fine. That is really not something that you need to have on your mind, not something you need to anticipate or worry about. It's something that could happen, just like many of the other flukes that happen in any hobby or any pet keeping experience. Uh, but it is something to keep in mind and I'm glad you watched this video to know more about it so that you are prepared and hopefully a bit relieved if you are concerned about that. But uh, in the comments, let me know. I think something that would be good is people, like whenever something bad happens, you let it know. But if you have not had a reptile escape, maybe mention that in the comment section too. So if you have, feel free to. But if you haven't, maybe mention that also so we can really see. Here's a poll, why not do a poll? Have you had a reptile escape? Uh, yep, yeah, okay. So there we go, that's Shadow, the master escape artist, hopefully to be contained forever from now on. Uh, but those things do happen sometimes. Hopefully this video helped. Uh, let me know what else you want to see videos on. Uh, that'll be it. I'm Alex and thanks for watching. <laughs>